I often hear comparisons of the USA with Rome and that the United States of America are the new Rome, decadent, old, corrupt, decayed, like the Western Roman Empire in the end stages of its existence. But is that true? Well, let's try to look at some similarities that the US shares with the late Roman Empire, but let's also look at some differences and then let's try to come to a conclusion. Let us first start with the similarities. 1. Social inequality A feature that the United States shares with the late Roman Empire is a very large gap between rich and poor. The Gini coefficient is a measure for the inequality of a society where one is an absolutely unequal society where one person would have everything and everybody else nothing and zero is a perfectly equal society where every person has exactly the same amount of wealth. It is sometimes also given in percent, so a value between zero and hundred. Ancient Rome had an incredibly high 0 0.43 or 43 and the US comes in at 41, almost as high as Rome. So while that does sound bad, we should keep in mind that the US ranks only on place 54 worldwide regarding income inequality and there are many other countries with a lot higher inequality. But still, the US is quite unequal comparable to ancient Rome. Second, bread and games, panem et kirkenses. The ancient Romans had the gladiatorial games where famously the gladiators would combat against each other or against wild beasts to the death. Now you might think that modern Americans don't have an equivalent, but where indeed people are not killed for sports anymore, brutal fighting sports are still quite widespread. Boxing apparently was not brutal enough, so at some point UFC was introduced the ultimate fighting championship, where modern day gladiators are not quite fighting to the death, but sometimes also not too far away, as severe injuries are quite common in that sport. Watching people brutally fight while sitting on a comfortable couch and eating chips, the modern day equivalent of Panem. And if that is not brutal enough, Luckily, the degree of violence in modern-day TV shows has been gradually increased in the last decades so that the modern-day American can get his dose of violence, just like the old Romans. Brutal beheadings and other atrocities are now being portrayed as a standard in many TV series, as if it was the most normal thing whereas this would have raised some serious eyebrows only 25 years ago. And in another 25 years, who knows? So, no, there are no gladiatorial games yet. But Panem et Kirkensis? Yes, very much. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting our work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long-term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. I think Majorian would thank you for supporting a channel bearing his name. I certainly do thank you. Gratias agotibi amiki. 3. Poverty After the crisis of the 3rd century, but especially in the last decades of the Western Roman Empire, more and more people of the Imperium were poor and had to live on the lowest of the existence scale. Beggars, homelessness and other forms of poverty became more widespread as the old glory days of the Empire had slowly faded. Compare this to modern day American cities such as Los Angeles and San Francisco where homelessness is rampant. Thousands upon thousands of people live in the most appalling conditions where even third world countries are having a hard time replicating this. And quite bizarrely, this all takes place with a backdrop of technological splendor, skyscrapers and the lofty homes of the rich. 
The income inequality is very much visible in many US cities and shows itself more and more often from its ugliest side. 4. Decay I quite often already talked about the state of the city of Rome in the late 5th and early 6th centuries AD. The glory days were over and Rome had to endure three brutal sacks in the 5th century. The population had dropped dramatically and many parts of the city would now slowly start to fall into decay. I talked extensively about the state of Rome during those times in these videos here. Now let us look at modern day American cities such as Detroit, Philadelphia and many others. There is widespread decay and many parts of these cities fall into disrepair while only some parts are being maintained and look nice. Especially outlying regions or poor areas are left to decay and fall completely into ruin. Sounds quite familiar, doesn't it? Exactly like Rome after around AD 500, where the outer lying parts of the city would start to fall into disrepair, while only the inner parts were being repaired and maintained. Many American cities seem to be following the late Romans in that regard. 5. Constant Wars The late Roman Empire found itself entrenched in constant warfare. From the crisis of the 3rd century to the last years of the Western Roman Empire and later continuing in the Eastern Roman Empire, there was almost constant warfare. The United States, after being established only 246 years ago as of release of this video, also found itself entrenched in constant warfare. War of independence, war against the British, war against Mexico, war against the Native American population, then a great civil war, then war against the Spanish, then World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq first time, Afghanistan, Iraq second time. If you would add up the duration of all of these wars, it would be around 150 years, more than half of the existence of that nation. The Temple of Janus would have been open more often than closed in American history, reminding us very much of the Roman Empire. 6. Social Polarization in the late Roman Empire, one would think that the Romans would have united against the barbarian invaders, but nay, they were busy fighting each other in endless civil wars and also fighting each other in everyday life, especially Christians versus pagans. They both blamed each other for the barbarian invasions and there was massive social polarization in the last decades of the Western Roman Empire. We can witness something very similar in the current US, where there is growing polarization, not only with regard to its two largest parties that drift apart from the center more and more, but also among the general population, where an outright culture war is going on. Growing political divide, blaming each other for the problems of society, that is something which the Romans would have immediately recognized. And now the differences. 1. Innovation Whereas the late Roman Empire, especially in the last hundred years of the Western Imperium, was very stagnant, nay, even regressing technologically, we absolutely cannot say the same about the USA. If the USA was really in decline, as many declinists commonly believe, then how come that the largest, most innovative and most successful companies on the planet almost always originate from the USA? We have extremely innovative companies such as SpaceX or Tesla that revolutionize personal transport and sustainable energy and space exploration due to rocket reusability, respectively. Then we also have innovative hardware and software companies such as Apple, Granted, their innovation has been lacking since Steve Jobs left us, but they are still wildly successful. Then we have many big tech companies such as Google, Twitter and many others. And many new ones are constantly popping up. 
The US remains a hotbed for innovation and technological progress is still going very strongly there, very contrary to the late Roman Empire, where technological decline was very, very visible. Second, demographics. Although it is impossible to derive accurate numbers and still many books are being written on that subject, it is very likely that the late Roman Empire saw a population decline. First, the Antonine Plague in the 160s AD struck the empire, killing possibly up to 20% of its entire 75 million population. Then in the 250s, the Cyprian Plague struck, again killing millions of people across the Roman Empire. Then laws such as Majorian's decree, the Novella Majoriani VI, Holy Maidens, Widows and their succession strongly indicate that there was a population decline and Majorian sought to counteract this by introducing laws that would encourage Roman women to have more children. So we can assume that the Roman Empire of the year AD 400 might have had a lower population than the Roman Empire of the year AD 150 before the Antonine Plague. Compare that to the USA and we get a very different picture. The USA is one of the very few Western countries that actually has an excellent population projection, even until the year 2100, where the US population is projected to rise to 434 million people from currently 331 million. Whereas countries like Germany, Japan, China or Russia will all be shrinking massively and some won't even reach 70% of their current population by 2100. So the USA is very different and vital in that regard and certainly not compatible with the view of a declining society. 3. No constant civil wars or usurpers Obviously, there are no constant usurpers popping up, where the president then has to send his generals all the time in order to destroy counter-presidents. But exactly that was absolute standard practice in the late Roman Empire. This began during the crisis of the 3rd century, where dozens of emperors and counter-emperors would reign and fight against each other in the time span of only 50 years. And in the last decades of the Western Roman Empire, there was such utter chaos that one could say that it was a free-for-all. It was constant civil war. Everybody was fighting everybody. Emperor against counter-emperor, magister militum against emperor, and vice versa. This is obviously not the case in the USA. And even though there are, as we said, societal problems, there would still be a very long way to go to even get anywhere near the levels of civil wars that were standard practice in the last hundred years of the Western Roman Empire. 4. Unique Geography in this video here, I explained why the Eastern Roman Empire survived longer and why the Western Empire fell first. A big reason for that was geography. The East just had the superior geography in combination with the richer provinces. And the USA has here even more of an advantage. While Western Europe, for example, is really quite open and reachable easily from all directions, the US is facing a moderate influx because there are two huge oceans to the west and to the east. Therefore, any kind of invasion is almost impossible as the neighbors to the north and the south don't present any danger. Moreover, the USA is implementing a policy where immigrants actually need to have some skills in order to be able to stay there. So this combination of stricter immigration policy with a unique geography that reduces the potential of any invasions gives the USA a very big advantage for the future. So summa summarum, despite the USA sharing some similarities with the late Roman Empire, I don't believe that the USA is in decline. Societal problems, yes, certainly they do exist in the USA, 
but the end stages of a dying empire look very different to me. In fact, I dare say that the USA is in a very vital position, much more so than most nations on this planet, especially compared to the Western European democracies. So I cannot agree that the USA is the new Rome. If anything, I think the USA will re-emerge from this crisis of the 3rd century and certainly endure for a much longer time than many declinists would want to make us believe. And if you are interested in how the fall of the Roman Empire started, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in the state of the city of Rome itself in that time, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias amici imperii romani and bene vale.